I recently spoke to a very dear friend of mine, Cara, about her transgender son. And we had a special guest appearance from him and he wasn't sure whether or not he wanted to come out to the world, but he decided that he was ready on this actual video. And as a nine year old boy, that's a huge thing to do. And I, have, I am so proud of him because he decided that now was the time that he had courage to actually be himself. So watch this family, this single mom, bring up this transgender boy, and it's just a story that will melt your heart. Cara, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. Um, so you and I have known each other, how long have we known each other? Five years? It's gotta be like that. I think, yeah, I think it's probably at least five years. I think it is. I think it is. And um, you have a child who is adorable, who I just adore. <laughs> have you got your hand underneath the phone like that? I do. Is that okay. better? It's reverbing. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Sorry to be a pun. That's okay. <laughs> All right, let's start again. <laughs> okay. Um, Cara, thank you so much for talking to me today. I really, really appreciate it. Really, truly. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, this topic is quite sensitive and I know it's a very, very big topic out in the world right now. And it's, you have a child who I absolutely adore. Absolutely adore. And, and we've had many conversations. And, um, but he wasn't always a he. All right, so he was born a she. Yes. And what was it like when, when it was announced to you that she wanted to become a boy? How did you feel? Well, I think in my situation, it was probably a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. For one thing, it was a slower process because it happened at such a young age. And how old? Uh, it started when he was three. Right. It started with, I'm not pretty. I'm not, um, I don't want girl clothes. I don't want girl toys. And at three, you think it's a phase, yeah. whatever, who cares? Let them dress how they want. Let them play with whatever toys. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Who cares? But the older my child got, the more insistent he became that he was not a she. And it was just very, very persistent and consistent. And so of course I started doing research and the more research and the more people I talked to, I was like, he's transgender. I think he's really transgender. And when he was five, I think he was five, he decided he wanted to change his name. I remember that. So we went through several names. We tried several before we came up with the one we want, which happened to be a, the middle name, just because it was a little more masculine. But mm -hmm. yeah, he tried out several. <laughs> wow, I remember that because I remember coming around to your house and um, this was before he transitioned. And, you know, having all of like, the Superman and his pajamas were like <laughs> Superman and superheroes. And, and it was interesting because there was all of these pretty little princess costumes in the closet, <laughs> but they were well at the back of the closet. <laughs> they were well at the back of the closet. And there was touches of pink in there, but there was definitely a lot of blue. Um, and I just remember it. And I remember you and I having a conversation and it was, it was normal. Oh, yeah. And he was so cool with that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, never, I never felt the need to push back mm -hmm. and say, no, you, you can't do this. You can't be this person. Um, in my mind, I just always wanted him to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if this is what's going to make him happy and keep him safe, then that's where we're going to go. I mean, it's not really about me. You just said the magic word, safe. 
making sure he's safe. How old is he now? He's nine. He will be 10 in a few months. And so obviously going through this at a young age, um, what is the process? Because obviously, you know, we have hormones coming up and we have a lot of stuff that's going on. Um, what's the process for you right now as a mom looking, trying to look after your son? Right now, things have gotten pretty difficult. Um, we have hormones starting and, and there have been physical changes that he is very unhappy with, extremely unhappy with. Um, and he feels like his body's betraying him. And I can't imagine how that feels. I can't imagine how difficult it is for him to look at himself and, and not like what he sees. Um, so we actually have an appointment with an endocrinologist at the end of the month. And I'm hoping that we're going to start some hormonal blockers, which gives them a couple years to really decide, yes, this is what I want, or no, it's not what I want, before they make a permanent decision about starting the opposite hormone. And we've had lots of discussions about, you know, everybody has the same hormones when they're born. It's just that at certain points in your life, one becomes a little bit stronger than the other. And so he, he's very well informed. <laughs> he is, because he's very spiritual as well. Um, so he's very spiritual and, and when him and I have had these conversations alone, cause we have our private chats, um, he's very open. And what I found interesting was he's like, well, I'm just different. I'm a bit weird. And I'm like, well, welcome to my circle, honey. Cause I'm weird too. <laughs> I speak to dead people and he's like, yeah, yeah, I have that thing too. And so do you think that him being so in tune with his, I guess, his body, who he is, has made him maybe a little bit more spiritual or vice versa? I think it's a good possibility. I don't know. I honestly don't know if he was born with something and, and I'm just open enough to not discourage anything that he comes to me with. Mm -hmm. um, because he has always known things that I'm like, how do you know this? Like, you, you just, you're not supposed to know. But he just knows. Yeah. And it's so very difficult to explain. And sometimes he would say, well, they told me. Okay, well, who told you? Well, they did. Okay. Yeah. So to him, it's normal. Mm-hmm. It's very normal. You know what I find beautiful about him is the fact that he knows who he is at this young age. Oh, he definitely knows who he is. Not wavering. No, no, there has been no wavering. Yeah. It has gotten, and, and even the days that he has come home from school and been um, upset or afraid that maybe something's going to come out that he doesn't want to come out yet and he's not really prepared for yet, I'll say, do you want to go back to being the girl name? And, and I get this are you kidding me? No. So to me, that's even more confirmation that if he's still willing to go through the struggles that he's having, then he really, this is who he really is. It's not a phase. And do, do his friends know at school? Some of his friends know. Yes. Um, Austin has chosen, I guess is the best word to say. Um, who knows and who doesn't know right and he's as you said very sensitive and very in tune with people i think that he senses somehow who will be okay and who would not yeah. so he has chosen certain people and they've all been very accepting right and so what how have you handled the naysayers how have you handle maybe the criticism or the compliments? Because I'm sure you've had a multitude of both. Uh, naysayers. Honestly, not too many people have been very verbal to me besides my family. I would say my family has been the worst as far as 
this comes. I, I honestly don't know. Um, my sister and I have not spoken for three years. Mm -hmm. um, she's of the opinion that my child is mentally unstable somehow and needs to be on medication. Now, what type of medication is supposed to solve this, I'm not entirely sure, but that's her opinion. And we have not been able to reach any type of middle ground, I guess is the best thing to say. So I, I just really don't speak to her anymore. I, I don't have room for that negative energy, that negative in my life. And I don't want Austin to feel that. I don't want him to feel like he's wrong somehow because he's not. He's just who he is. And and what did it make you feel like as a parent when he announced that he wanted to transition? Did it make you feel like you'd fail? Did it make you, because I know I've spoken to many people about this and they went through a wealth of emotions because you're the parent. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, You're having to juggle his emotions and yours. I don't know that I would use the word failed. Um, I felt guilty at one point because uh, I think every person who has ever been pregnant knows that they, they, you know, think about the future and what this baby would be like. And I remember thinking, I wish I was going to have a boy because I, absolutely hated high school and hated being terrorized by girls and women and they can just be brutal and I thought oh I just I would not want my little girl to go through all of that it would be so much e easier to just have a boy mm -hmm. so I felt guilty inside that I had wished for this and then now he's going through all of these transitions and obviously I've come to terms with it's not my fault. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> this is who this is who he is. It's not my fault. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I did feel guilty. I felt guilty. I don't ever feel like I felt like a failure. However, I did go through a lot of grieving periods. What was the grieving like? What was what did you grieve for? You know, you still have this healthy, beautiful, loving, caring, sincere child. And there's still a part of you that thinks that first child you had has now died. They, they're, they're gone. Um, and it, it truly is like you're experiencing their death because they're not coming back. Um, and I, loved that little girl and I had all these you know thoughts for her once she was born and all of these things that you think are going to happen and you're going to share especially being a mom that you know you think oh now we can have mother-daughter time have nails done <laughs> sorry I'm I'm getting emotional oh, it's but um you know, he, he was not happy as that person. And he is what's the most important thing in my world. And so, yes, I grieved for this little girl that I had and was beautiful and charming and charismatic. And now I have a little boy who is a rough housing superhero minecraft you know everything boy related and snowmobile snowing skiing all of that yeah i mean so and i won't say that it's all completely gone i mean there's been times i've walked through target and it's like oh what a cute dress mm. and it pulls at your heart a little bit but you you learn to just move on and know what's right you know you've done it all this as a single mom too <laughs> let's not forget this whole process you've done this as a single mom and you lived where you lived then you moved down south eight 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 hours away for a couple of years then you came back 
to a place that was a little bit more acceptable in the LGBTQ community. Yes. And how did that work for you? Was that better for you being where you are now? It is definitely better where we are now. Um, Originally, I had wanted to move to be closer to my parents, Mm -hmm. Um, but we all know things don't always work out the way that we expected them to or thought they might. And when he was getting to a point where he was starting to need to speak with someone or do some counseling, uh, we were driving an hour and a half for that to happen. And that's just too far. It's just too far. So I started researching, you know, where is LGBTQ friendly? Where is a good place to go? And lo and behold, the, the place we moved from was one of the very top places. Um, and then I was offered my previous job back with all of the same benefits, the same pay, the same everything. And I thought, yeah, this is the universe going, uh, you're supposed to be back there. You're not supposed to be here. Yeah. Cause you struggled with that for a little while, didn't you? I did. Yes, I did. I did. Cause so, I'm not really a fan of the snow. No, I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you know, if you look back on five years ago as a parent, what do you wish you would have known then that you know now to help you as a parent go through one supporting the transition to the grieving process and also just accept it, being accepted, feeling accepted, this is accepted? Um, oh. That's a tough one because I think every day it can be a day-to-day struggle um, because there are people who are going to push back and fight back. And I think at the end of the day, what you really have to remember is what's important to you and what's important to your child and what's going to keep you two safe and make sure that you feel loved. I mean, to me, that's the most important thing is to make sure he knows that he's loved for who he is. And even if he were to say tomorrow, I want to switch back, I would still love him. I'd be like, okay, well, this is going to be a change, but okay. Um, but it's, it's definitely, it's not an easy thing by any means. And it's definitely difficult when the people who you are fighting with the most are your family. Yeah. That must be really hard. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's become quite complicated. We'll put it that way. My sister pushes back. My family has, you know, some of them will use the name. Some of them won't. Some of them will use pronouns. Some of them won't. And it's almost easier to just not be around them, which is difficult too, because you, you want your child to know that they have a family. Definitely. Definitely. We also have to remember that this is not something that you've taken lightly. You have seeked counseling. You have got him into counseling. He is talking to someone who has also gone through the transition himself. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Um, He sees someone at least every other week. Mm -hmm. Uh, talks to him about how he's feeling, things maybe he just can't talk to mom about. Um, And we have also experienced him wanting to commit suicide at one point. Um, And he's, he's young. I mean, that's pretty scary that it, you know, nine years old, your, your kid says, I'm just, I'm not sure that I'm supposed to be here. Um, So we've continued the counseling and, um, he and I made a pact and we wear bracelets and it's a reminder to him that I'm here. I'm always here no matter what. So I think that's the most important thing for, for them, you know, especially at a younger age and teenage years. And they just, they need to know that there's at least one person out there who has their back. That's a beautiful thing that you've done. (laughs) It really is. How did you come up with the bracelet idea? Uh, his therapist actually gave me that idea. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So. so, you know, obviously there are other parents in this position 
and I always say this question at four o'clock in the morning, which is often our darkest hour, between two and four in the morning, and where thoughts are just coming through our head and we are struggling. Um, and if there's another parent that's searching right now because they have gone, they're going through the same thing or their, their child has just come out or they're saying that they want to transition, what would your advice be to any parent who is in your situation right now? Um, again, I think it goes back to just being their parent. Mm. Would you rather have a child who is happy and healthy and with you or one who feels so down on themselves and so unhappy with this world that they don't want to be here anymore because they of that um and and that's not a light topic either so sorry to be a downer but the uh the transgender population has a very very high suicidal rate um so I would rather have my child be happy and healthy and here with me. So I guess follow your heart, listen to your heart and listen to what it tells you. And what would you say to someone who is going through the, uh, the, the transition and hasn't got a family member who has probably been disowned for whatever reason? Uh, what would you say to them? Uh, there's someone out there. There's someone out there who's going to love you for just you. There's someone out there who will accept you for you and will love you for you. Yes. Whoever that might be. And there's lots of, I mean, there's, there's lots, there's so many things now, especially online and, and groups and, I guess if they have access to something like that, that would be a good suggestion. You know, just find somebody to talk to, even if it's just online. Somebody who knows how you're feeling. And I'd love to give you free hugs. I love yeah. hugging, but yeah, all this coronavirus, I can't. So we can't, we can't hug right now. <laughs> I know. I, I'm that person that's like, I'll be your mom. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'll give you hugs. I'll, I'll take you in. Absolutely. Um, Cara, I want to thank you for being raw, vulnerable, telling your story. Um, because I do think that the more people are aware, and it's just bringing awareness to the topic, because a lot of people think about the person going through the transition. They don't think about the family and the way it is. It, it really is a big topic and they don't see what the parents are going through. Well, yeah, I mean, it's obviously, it's a, it's a huge, it's a game changer. Yeah. It's a game changer. Yeah. But, you know, somebody somewhere told me, apparently I can deal with this, so. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Cara, thank you for, for, your inspiration, your insight, and uh, just for being you. And you are an amazing mom. I just want to well, say. Thank you. I think you're an amazing mom too. Oh, thanks. Recording. Hey, Austin. Hi. Good to see you. How you, you doing? Too. I saw you. I saw you in the trampoline at the back. That's awesome. So you agreed just to uh, to uh, share some stuff, all right? Are you okay, okay telling the world of who you are? Yeah. Why is that? Uh, because I believe in myself and I'm not like other people who don't really believe in themselves and like say I'm not able to do this, like I'm too scared. But like I, I depend on myself, so um, I'm saying yes to this because, like, because <clears throat> I believe in myself and I, I don't really care what people think about me. It's very brave. Thanks. It's really brave. You know, you got me crying again. You always get me crying. 
So listen, what was it like? Do you, what's it like to tell your friends? Did you tell your friends? No, not all of them, but like only like some of them. Cause I, it, it's pretty scary to tell like everybody that you don't really, that you don't really trust yet, like about like your gender and stuff. So I'm telling the people who I trust and then I'm going to have to get more cur courage to tell more people. But like, Doing this is like a really big thing, so it's hard. And at the time, I only had like like more an opportunity, an oppor opportunity, opportunity. Yeah. During like when we ha when we didn't have like the coronavirus, it's like school's gonna start, and there's gonna be like new people, like. And it's going to be a lot more harder because, like, you don't know those people right now at the time. Because, like, I'm going to fourth grade and then people are going to third. And they're moving up. And then there's going to be, like, new kindergarten, preschool people in our school. So it's going to be harder to make them understand what not to tell and what to tell. Hey, you know what? You're kind of telling a few people now by t talking to me. How does that feel? Uh, kind of nervous. Right. Because I don't know what people are going to think, but do I really care? No. That's very brave of you. But you know what? I'm going to say this. So there's a lot of people that who will watch this that are, that are looking at you and going, wow, you're really brave. You know, you're nine years old, you know who you are. And they're gonna be like, yeah, go Austin. That's like, because that's amazing. That's amazing, you know? And you should be really proud of yourself, the fact that you know who you are and you're working at it. And what, what I really admire about you is the fact that you can talk to your mom and you can talk to people who you trust. So let me ask you, let me ask you a question. If somebody was, if somebody was thinking exactly the same, like, oh, I don't feel comfortable with who I am and I, my gender, it just doesn't feel right. What would you say to them? You know, what, what piece of advice would you give to them? That's kind of hard. Cause like some people have like, more of their selves and they don't really like to show it and they just say that because like they don't really believe in their selves but i'm gonna have to say just believe who you are and it doesn't really matter but if people are your friends and they don't like how you're acting then they're not really friends because like friends don't do that that's right they don't Dude, I'm so proud of you for doing this. Thanks for chatting with me. Thanks for You're coming welcome. out to the world and telling the world who you are. You're welcome. Yeah, you rock. Okay, thank Absolutely you. rock. <laughs> okay, thank you. He's out. <laughs> out. <laughs> Austin is out. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was not expecting that. I wasn't either. You know, that takes a lot of courage. And, and what I saw there is the fact he was proud and he was just like, hey, you know what? You just got to believe in yourself. That's awesome. You brought up one hell of a kid. <laughs> it's not done yet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh my God, thank you.